there is a theory known as theory of probability. That if you make a wild guess, the chances you'll be right is depending upon what are the options. For example, if I toss a coin, head or tails, whatever reply you give, the chances you'll be right is one upon two. Ha, 50%. Two options, chances you'll be right is one upon two, 50%. If I cost a coin twice, the chances I'll be right both the times is one upon two into one upon two, it is one upon four, it is 25%. If I toss a coin thrice, the chances I'll be right all three times is one upon two into one upon two into one upon two, it is one upon eight, 12 and a half percent. If I throw a dice, the dice has got six sides. The chances if I make a wild guess it will be right is one upon six. Now if you apply this theory of probability that someone made a wild guess, for example, what is the shape of the earth? You can think of 10 things. Flat, square, rectangle, triangular, hexagonal, on and on, maybe spherical. The chances if you make a wild guess it is spherical, it will be right is one upon 10. If you ask a person, the light of the moon, is it its own light or reflected light? If he makes a wild guess, chances he'll be right is one upon two. The chances that both are right, the shape of the earth and the light of the moon is not its own light, is one upon 10 into one upon two is one upon 20. That is 5%. All living creatures made of what? You can think of a thousand things. Sand, iron, tin, wood, on and on, maybe even water. Chances you make a wild guess and one is right is one upon thousand. Chances all three are correct. Shape of the earth is spherical. Light of the moon is reflected. Everything made from water is one upon 10 into one upon two into one upon thousand. Is one upon 20,000. Is 0.005%. Only in three scientific facts, it's 0.005%. I've already mentioned several. And if you read my book, there are hundreds. There are many things. Quran speaks about botany in Surah Rahad, chapter number 13, verse number 3, that all the fruits are created in pairs, in sexes, male and female. Quran says in Surah Taha, chapter number 20, verse 53, that the plants are made in sexes, male and female, which you came to know recently. In the field of zoology, Quran says the animals and the birds live in community like the human beings. In Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 38, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about the bee, that it can find its path, which we came to know recently. In Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 60 and 69. The Quran says that the worker bee is the female bee. Previously thought it was the male bee. Quran says in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 69, that the worker bee is the female bee. Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the spider in Surah Ankabut, chapter 29, verse number 41. The Quran speaks about the lifestyle of the ant in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 17 and 18, which we have come to know recently. Quran speaks about genetics, that it is the male fluid, it is the sperm which is responsible for the sex of the child. In Surah Najam, chapter number 53, verse number 45 and 46, as well as chapter number 75, verse number 37 to 39, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about embryology, that all the human beings are made from alaka, a leech-like substance, something which clings. In Surah Alaq, Surah Ikra, chapter 96, verse number 2, which we came to know recently. Quran speaks about the various embryological stages. Alaka, Mudga, Izama, Lahem. In Surah Mu'minun, chapter number 23, verse number 12 to 14, which we have come to know recently. There are various scientific facts mentioned in the Quran. I'll just mention Two more. There are people who say that after we human beings die and after we are buried and our bones are disintegrated, how will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be able to reconstruct the bone on the day of judgment? So Allah says, it's mentioned in the Quran, chapter number 75, verse number 3 and 4, that when they say that how will Allah be able to reconstruct the bones on the day of judgment, tell them, Allah can not only reconstruct the bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your finger. What does Allah mean by saying He can not only reconstruct your bones, He can even reconstruct in perfect order the very tips of your finger? It was in 1880 that Sir Francis Gold, 
he discovered the fingerprinting method and said that no two fingerprints, even in a million human beings, are identical. Today, the police, the CID, the FBI, the CIA, they use the fingerprinting method to identify the criminal. Quran speaks about the fingerprinting method 1400 years ago, and we discovered in 1880. Who could have mentioned this? I would like to mention one more thing before I end the scientific facts is that there was a scientist by the name of Professor Takrata Khashan. Professor Takrata Khashan hails from Thailand, and he was doing a great deal of research in the pain receptors. Previously, we human beings, we thought, and the doctors thought, that only the brain was responsible for the feeling of pain. Today, we come to know that there are certain receptors in the skin which are also responsible for the feeling of pain. That's the reason when a person of burn injury comes to a doctor, the doctor takes a pin and pricks it in the area of burn. If the patient feels pain, the doctor is happy. The pain receptors are intact. If the patient does not feel pain, the doctor is sad. The pain receptors have been destroyed. It's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse 56, that as to those who reject our signs, we shall cast them in the hellfire, and as often as their skins are roasted, we shall give them fresh skin so that they feel the pain. Indicating there is something in the skin which is responsible for the feeling of pain. Imagine, Quran speaks about the pain receptors 14 years ago. And Professor Takrat Akashan, when he came to know this is mentioned in the Quran, in the ninth medical conference in Riyadh, in the conference itself, he said the Shahada and said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah, and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. So when you ask the atheist, who could have mentioned this in the Quran? The only reply I can give you is the same which he gave you earlier. It is the creator, it is the maker, it is the producer, it is the manufacturer, it is the inventor. This creator, this producer, this manufacturer, this maker, this inventor, we Muslims call him as Allah. That's the reason today science is not eliminating God. It is eliminating models of God. La ilaha illallah. Scientists today, they're eliminating models of God. This cannot be God. This cannot be God. They aren't eliminating God. And a famous philosopher and scientist, Francis Bacon, he said that those who have little knowledge of science, they become atheists. But those who have in-depth knowledge of science, they become a believer in God. I would like to end my talk with the quotation of the Quran from Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 53, which says, Sanurihim ayatina fil afakhi, wa fi anfusihim, hatta yatabayyira lom anna ulaq, awalam yakfi bi rabbika, anna wala kulli shayin shaheed, that soon we shall show them our signs into the furthest regions of the horizons and into the souls until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Wa akhra dawana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.